Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today I want to answer a few questions as usual. Um, I get a lot of calls and people, you know, we do a lot of YouTube videos. We have like 35 million uh, views on our YouTube, YouTube channel. And a lot of people show me and tell me, well, Kirk, how do you get this finish right here? This is called a sand finish, guys. It's the easiest finish you can do. And how do you get all these lines right here? The same way you get a perfect finish, uh, perfect sand finish. I'll show you. Uh, let's see. It's uh, okay. The wall's getting hard, guys. That's uh, us trying to beat the rain here. Well, in order to get that particular finish, there, guys, what you're going to need is a float. Now, let me explain some of these floats real quick because you got a lot of them. These are hard rubber or polyurethane. These are designed to make the wall true and plumb and hard. But that's not what we're trying to do here, guys. You make, you make the wall true and plumb and you condense it, you compact it, and it makes it stronger. You got your five inch and you got your three. Don't buy threes, guys, buy fives. It's the same with um, a lot of these uh, plastic trials that you in the UK. You use a five inch, it does the exact same thing like the polyurethane or hard rubber and a cork float. They all do the same thing. You're going to need, in order to get that finish right there, you're going to need a sponge float. And yeah, I generally use these green sponge floats. Uh, these yellow ones are just as good, if not better. In fact, I, th I think they're built much better myself. Uh, they're called killer bees. But anyway, these yellow ones are stronger and they, they pull out more aggregate because they're a little bit more coarse. And what I'm using here is uh, a coarse or a, it's a plaster sand. What kind of sands do you have? You have Felton and Ole, and they're fine. How do you make a fine sand look like this? Well, it takes some practice. I'll show you. And while we're on this, the same point of floats, guys, these five inches are the ones you want. Don't buy these threes because they're you'll spin your wheels. It uh, doesn't matter if, how, if they're pretty like this. They're three inches. Don't buy them. Buy a five inch. Anyway, I'm going to avoid using the... the uh, green one and I'm going to use the yellow one because it'll make it a little coarser. Now we're messing around here killing time <laughs> when I should be on this wall here. Now what I want to do is I want to pull this aggregate out. I want to get the sand out. In order to get that right there uh, I've got to put a lot of water on this wall. See if you want a perfect finish guys like a, I mean a real fine finish you, you let it dry like this and you see you can make it a perfect finish like this. People say, well, how do you get it really smooth? Let it dry, and that's pretty dry, and just hit it lightly, a little bit of water. But I don't want this. I want it heavy. And can I still bring this wall back? Sure I can. A lot of water. A lot of water, a lot of elbow grease. See, I just dipped it. I'm going to dip it again after I get all the sand out of there. And as what I'm doing right here is pushing it. A lot of pressure. Now that filled this float with stucco. So it's full of stucco right now. If I keep going, it'll just get finer and finer. So I got to get all the stucco out of here. Okay, get it all out. And notice, guys, I'm tapping the inside of the bucket. Half the flow goes in, the other half goes in too. Just like that. If you slam it like this, you destroy the float. It goes the wrong way. So, okay. And right now, all I'm going to do, guys, I'm hustling because this wall is set. If you got a set wall, well then you got to use a lot of water, a lot of elbow grease, and a lot of speed. Okay, now I'm going to create that look right there in a minute. First I've got to bring this a lot of sand out. And keep in mind, this sand is, is fine. If I, you could use two hands guys. If I had a clean coarse wash sand, It'd be much easier to get this finish. Or had I jumped on it about a half hour ago, I wouldn't have to be straining. But we're doing a lot of things here. So, okay. I gotta bring that, I gotta bring the stucco back to life. Once I bring it back to life, then I can put my float marks in it. It's hard to revive stucco, guys. That's why you should never let it get away from you. And how many times has stucco gotten away from us? Hundreds of times. Okay, now that we got it, I brought this 
middle back to life. I'll show you. Now, if I were to take this float right now and go here, nothing's going to happen. I'm not going to give it. You're not going to see these float lines. You see that? The lines here. A lot of people hate that. But we match what we see. So, okay, I'm going to match that right there. I need to clean this float once more because it's too full of plaster right now to get those lines. All right. You can get the lines. It takes a lot of water. Even that is not perfect of what I want. But the more I do it, the closer it becomes. And you see, they got a lot of aggregate, so we don't want to make our finish perfect. We want it, we want it just like theirs. You go a bunch of different ways, and you use the excess fat. So what I've actually done, guys, is I'm using the excess fat that I'm bringing out. It's kind of like lime. When I, we do interiors, we, we use a, a diamond finish. It's got a lot of fat, a lot of lime, and that way we have time. But now you see, as I go over it, it becomes, well, it starts to look like that. I was going to say uglier and uglier, but that's just not the right terminology. It becomes like the existing. You get some float marks in there. And you want that. You want some different uh, features in here. You want the sand to come out and you want the float lines to show. So again, if I wanted to make it pretty, all I do is let it dry about five more minutes and I hit it one more time and it will be perfect and uniform, but we don't want that. Today's video is all about how to, how to match those float lines and if you let it go like I did, you'll be hustling and straining like I just did. Anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason's on the camera. We thank you guys for watching as usual. We'll see you guys on the next one. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates, so if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that, for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.